All right, everybody. So everybody got the uh, exam two back. And um, again, I, like, I'm tickled. Like, that's probably one of the best exams I've ever given. Uh, I'm, I'm delightfully stunned. Um, so great, great job, everybody. Um, homework six was due today. How'd that go? Good. OK. Um, I do want to mention a little bit about the homework schedule moving forward. So you all are going to have your CAD uh, drawing for the topo due the Friday before Thanksgiving break. Um, but you are going to have a series of homework assignments that are popping up. And so I'm going to have a homework today due Monday, a homework on Monday due the following Monday because of the nature of the topics that we're about to do over the next few weeks. But the homework is really short. It's not a very long assignment. Okay. Um, and you'll, you'll kind of see what I mean when we start getting into this. We're going to have at least, at probably three more homeworks. Hom homework on horizontal curves, vertical curves, and earthwork. The earthwork homework might be a little bit longer, but I'll probably give you till after Thanksgiving break to submit that. So, sound good? Let's get into curve land. This is the only type of curve that will be on the final. That was a joke, not a very funny one. My goodness. Okay. Um, so the last remaining topics of the semester are really themed in one area, and that area is construction. Okay. Um, what we're going to be talking about are where surveying can affect the final set of plans in a given project. Um, and so I want to spend a little bit of time talking about root alignments. Um, so one of the primary applications of land surveying, and this is particularly true for you as civil engineers, is in construction. You know, if we're going to build a bridge, build a road, build a highway, build a dam, we kind of need to know where it is, right? That's a very uh, large view of the issue, but in, in all seriousness, if we're going to be doing precise work out in the field, we do need precise measurements of where that work needs to occur, okay? Um, now, a common class of construction projects, and I would sort of split construction projects up into two main classes. So we have sort of like area-based projects, so we're talking about site planning, building, you know, anything that occurs over a given area. But then we also have roof-based projects, projects that occur along a given path. So we're talking about roads, highways, railroads, uh, etc. And so uh, what I'm talking about with route surveys, a route project, is any, any type of transportation facility that could be characterized as long and narrow. That, that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about a route-based project. Um, when we're doing these projects, we've got to do a combination of both some office work and some field work. And this is going to be particularly true for the horizontal uh, curve lab. Because when we do the curve lab next week, um, we're gonna, it's going to be a little bit different. We're actually going to start out in the classroom doing some calculations and then going out into the field and staking it out. So it's going to be the opposite of the labs we've been doing thus far, like for the leveling. Remember with leveling, we would go out and do the, do the uh, measurements and then we come back into the office and do the calculations. Well, with the curve lab, it's going to be opposite. We're going to do the calculations first, then go out in the field and stake it out. So um, just trying to, to define a little bit of reality into the situation. But the idea is along a route-based project, and we've talked about this a little bit even in our first CAD lab, is that what we would do is we would um, stake our locations along the center line of the facility, so the center line of the road or the center line of the median or what have you, um, and then we would stake out the, um, the project along that, uh, that center line, and that's how we would reference the uh, construction project. Um, whenever we're doing a route-based project, our general goal is to try and provide what I would call a smooth transition along the project path. And that word smooth um, is probably a bit loosely defined at this point. Um, but what I would say for your purposes is that we, we need to consider both horizontal and vertical alignments. For example, if we're talking about vertical alignments along a profile view or an elevation view, you all probably wouldn't want to drive your cars along the existing ground surface, right? Instead, you would want a more smooth transition along the project path to create a more smooth driving experience, right? Well, the same thing would be true along a horizontal alignment. So if we're trying to define a road that goes uh, uh, through these two neighborhoods and around this wooded area, we would want a somewhat smooth perspective. And so what that means is installing curves into our uh, uh, route projects. 
Now, um, whenever we're designing roads, highways, what have you, typically what we're trying to do is we're trying to minimize cost we're trying to minimize um, environmental impacts, but we've also got to maintain safety standards. So to, to keep it simple, um, we're probably going to use tighter curves around, say, neighborhood <coughs> roads or roads around, let's say, the city than we would on Interstate 64. Interstate 64 has larger design speeds, so because of that, we need, we need a softer curve, either horizontally or vertically. Does that idea kind of make sense? Okay. Um, what we're going to be doing for the next few weeks is sort of looking at route-based uh, 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 survey and route-based constructions, but we're going to be looking at sort of like each week in three dimensions. And if you remember from our very first lab in here, whenever we're looking at a civil engineering project or any three-dimensional object in general, we really have three ways of looking at it. The plan view, the profile view, or the elevation view, and the section view, right? Those were the three considerations. And so, this week, I want you to focus on the plan view, okay? So this is the helicopter looking down, okay? And so when I say the term horizontal curve, I'm saying horizontal with respect to, to that frame of reference. Next week, we're going to look at the profile and the elevation view. And so in that instance, we're going to be considering vertical curves, curves in the direction of gravity. Uh, for the section view, from a civil engineering perspective, what we're really interested in is earthwork calculations. So cut and fills, removing earth, and so on and so forth. So that's kind of going to be the goal of between now and Thanksgiving break. Does that make sense? That's kind of our purpose. Okay. Um, I want to talk about staking a little bit because that's kind of the big sort of goal with a, with a root-based project is actually locating it in the field and actually indicating the project. So whenever you're looking at a project, your initial alignment, um, whenever you're staking it out, is going to be a series of straight line or what I'll call tangent sections. So if the project, let's say it's going to begin right here, you're going to initially stake it out on these straight line segments, and you're going to get uh, identify these points right here, which we'll call PIs. PI stands for point of intersection. So that's where this straight line path and this straight line path uh, intersect. Okay. Um, and so we'll go from the beginning of the project all the way down. We can also, for each of these intersections between straight line and straight line, we can define, define a deflection angle. And you, when we first started talking about angles, I said that deflection angles are always measured from straight line segment to straight line segment. They're between 0 and 180 degrees. We talked about that, and, I, and we said, we're not going to worry about it right, uh, right now, but we'll worry about it later. It's later, but we're going to worry about it now. Okay. Um, but the idea is, okay, so for example, from here to here, that's a deflection angle of, I don't know what, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, something like that, just making, making that up. Um, and so this would be our initial uh, uh, a stake. And then what we would do is, for these straight line alignments, what we would do is install a horizontal curve, okay? So, um, for example, if we look at this first curve right here, so here's the initial alignment. We have a curve that begins right here. So this is our point of curvature. So the project, beginning of project starts here. and We go down, go down, go down. Then we hit this point right here, which is our point of curvature. And we curve around and around until we hit this point. We call that point the point of tangency. That's the point when we then go back on our straight line segment. So already I'm starting to introduce to you some common notation. So I've introduced to you PC as the point of curvature, I've introduced PI as the point of intersection, and PT as the point of tangency. So you can think of PC as when the project, the, the, the curve begins, and PT is when the curve ends. Does that make sense? Okay, um, I'm all, I'll admit I am going to use the term delta and I interchangeably. Delta or I represents the deflection or the intersection angle, the angle where those two straight line segments intersect. And so I do want to mention right off the bat that we do use a pretty standard notation when we're specifying horizontal curves, and we're going to try and respect that pretty significantly uh, in this course. So I just want to make sure that's uh, uh, mentioned. Um, while, while I'm discussing, did everybody get the curve handout? Anybody not get the curve handout? Raise your hand. I need to hear, see it high if you didn't get the curve handout. Did you get the curve handout? Did everybody get the curve handout? Okay. 
So we'll reference that here in a bit. Okay. So I do want to mention stationing. Uh, do you all remember in our discussion in the CAD lab that a full station is 100 feet? You all remember that reference? Okay. So whenever you're stationing a project, so typically the beginning of the project will be either zero or it'll be maybe something tying into a larger stationing system dependent upon the scale of your project. Um, so we'll start out at station here. So the distance, for example, from this tick mark to this tick mark, so this is station zero, station one, station two, station three. The distance between these tick marks is a full 100 feet, okay? So we, when we reference this, we typically use the convention like number plus two numbers, and that's sort of a shorthand indication that what we're talking about is stationing. We're talking about uh, uh, um, indicators along a given route-based project. So really, you know, you could think about it. If you had station one plus 50, just remove the plus, and that's 150 feet along the line from the beginning of the project. Make sense? So it's just a convention to make sure that we're all speaking the, uh, the same language when we're talking about stationing. Okay? So far so good? Okay. So I want to talk about horizontal curve components. Um, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page with the types of curves that we're focusing on and make sure that you understand the relevant geometry and the computation of the components that we're about to discuss. Okay? Now, before we get into this, um, the first thing I want to make sure that everybody's clear on is that if we were talking about horizontal curves, so we're talking about only curving in a planimetric fashion, okay? There are really two main classes of horizontal curves. We would call those simple curves, or, uh, or what I would say circular horizontal curves. Maybe I should be more, more specific. Circular horizontal curves and spiral horizontal curves, okay? The difference between the two is that in a circular horizontal curve, the radius of the curve is constant throughout the entire curve, whereas in a spiral horizontal curve, the radius varies as you go along the curve. There are specific applications as to why you would want a spiral curve. A good example would be if you ever have a road where the uh, speed limit is decreasing or a segment of the road where a speed limit is decreasing, a good example of that might be an exit. So if you're on the interstate, an exit, right? So if you think about driving along, let's say, Interstate 64, and you take an exit, like it's kind of kind of soft, and then it kind of bends a little bit. It's trying to get you as the driver to indicate, hey, you kind of need to slow down because you're going from the interstate to a city, right? So, Or anytime you have some challenging geometry or speed limit changes and whatnot. We're going to focus only on circular curves in, uh, in this class. I just want to make sure that you are aware that there are two different types of curves to assess, okay? Now, when we take circular curves, we can take circular curves and break them up even further. So I would say for circular curves, we have simple curves. So a simple curve is just this, just a straight line, circular segment, straight line. Okay, that's a simple curve. A compound curve would be, okay, we have a straight line segment, then we have a little bit of a curve that goes to here, and then a second different horizontal curve that goes from here to here, we would call that a compound horizontal curve. And then a reverse curve would just be back tangent, let's say one curve going this way, and then another curve going this way. But here's the thing, these two right here, which are the quote unquote more complicated ones, this is just two simple curves. This is just two simple curves. So if you understand how to navigate the mathematics of a simple horizontal curve, you can do these sort of by default, okay? So that's why we're going to focus primarily on uh, simple horizontal curves. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So the idea is that what we would do is I, I want to make sure that you all get kind of the big picture. So our job in this course as land surveyors is to locate the curve out in the field. Right? So the idea is given some data about a given project, we're actually going to, I mean, literally take stakes and pin them into the ground. We're going to do this in Buskirk Field. Pin them into the ground to accurately define a circular segment. But I want to make sure that you all understand as part of a larger picture. Okay. So as an example, um, in here, I'm going to give you the radius of the curve and I'm going to say, stake it out. Whereas in a transportation engineering course, you're going to design the radius of the curve. Okay. We're not doing that in here because that's not, not our focus, okay? But next semester, if you choose to take CE 342, that's something you'll discuss in there is how to actually design a curve in order to meet design speed requirements uh, for a given road, okay? Does that kind of make sense? 
Now, the big thing to keep in mind is that the final staking at the end of the day goes along the curve. So we stake straight line segments, you know, like one full station, two full station, three full station. When we get to the curve, we stake from the PC to the PT and then keep going. And so there's a little bit of a subtle nuance that you got to be aware of along, from a stationing perspective when you stake from the PC to the PT. We'll get to that here in a bit. Okay. Now, this slide right here has got a lot baked on it. And this is probably one of, if not the most important slides in the entire presentation. But this image, I did not just come up with this image myself. This image came from the handout that you see right here. This handout, by the way, is something that everybody in this room could download today. This handout comes from the NCES, the NCWS FE reference manual. So when you take the FE exam, you are going to be given a standard document that has a series of equations and lookups and tables and charts and figures and what have you. And this image came directly from that. Okay, So I, I just wanted to make sure you knew where this came from. This I will give you on the file. I will give you this. The, you, you, I'll still let you make a formula sheet, but I'm giving you this. Okay. Now, I want to make sure that there's a couple, uh, so there's a lot of stuff here on this, this, I, this diagram, and so I'm going to break it down into maybe something that's a bit more digestible, okay? So I've, I've split it up into points, angles, and distances. So <coughs> points, so there's three points that I would say are the most important, the PC, the PI, and the PT. Ironically, I'm not actually mentioning this point right here because from a staking perspective, we actually don't need to stake this point out, and there's often cases where this point's in the middle of the mountain, so we wouldn't stake it out even if we wanted to. I'm more interested in just staking along the curve. So the PC, the PI, and the PT, those are the ones I, I'm interested in. Now for angles, there are two angles I'm interested in. There's the intersection angle, um, which is this angle right here. Now geometry will tell you that this angle and this angle are actually the same. I'm sure that on this slide it probably doesn't look that way, but I just want you to be aware that this is just a schematic, and to be honest, it might be squunched down a little bit. I mean, in all honesty, curves really kind of like look like this. You know what I mean? So what they're doing is they're taking this and they're kind of squunching it a little bit so you can just kind of see all the symbols on one slide. Okay? Um, but the other symbol that I do want to mention is this degree of curve, this term D right here. Um, we'll get to that here in a bit, but I'll say that D is related to this 100 feet uh, right here. The other distances that I will mention are the, the straight line segments, which I think are most critical. So we have the radius of the curve. We have the tangent distance here and here. We have the length of the curve. Length of the curve is not actually being shown on the image, but it's, it's this this like if I were to take a string and tape it along here and actually measure it that is the length of the curve and we have LC LC is the distance from here to here for every single curve in existence which is longer L or LC L the length of the curve is longer than the long core distance every time okay that's just geometry so if you're doing math and you get the opposite you did something wrong okay um, the other two distances we have are the external distance and the middle ordinate, and uh, those are mostly, uh, uh, we'll, we're going to use that in our CAD lab for uh, um, as-built surveys uh, here in a bit. Okay. Now, yeah, sorry, yes. What's the, what's the little c? Oh, I'm going to get to that on Wednesday. So, so that's a great question. So there's a little c and a little d right here, okay? Um, that's a great question. So the short answer is we're going to need to compute these quantities in order to be able to stake it out. That's a fantastic question. Let me talk about that very briefly. So if you have a curve like this, right? Okay, so let's say that this is your straight line segment right here, right? So let's call this right here the PI. Let's call this right here the PC, right? So what's going to happen from a field perspective is you're going to set the instrument up right here, right? Okay. You're going to cite the PI as a back site and you're going to set the horizontal angle to zero, right? In order to stake out this curve, what you're going to need to do is angle and distance to here. So you're going to need that angle and that distance. And then you're going to do that and you're going to do that and you're going to do that and you're going to do that. And so you're going to be tracking along the curve and literally placing stakes in the ground right there to map the curve out. 
So to answer your question, we are going to use those. We're going to use them a little later. That's a Wednesday discussion. That's a, that's a good question. Any other questions so far? This is good stuff. I like it. Okay. Um, this term here, degree of curvature, okay, this is related to this term 100 feet. And so I want to specify that in a little bit more detail. So the degree of curvature is basically like the angle change per 100 feet, okay? But that 100 feet could be defined two different ways. So that 100 feet could be defined from an arc perspective, the length of this arc, or that 100 feet could be defined per the length of this chord. And so you would get slightly different angles dependent upon what definition you chose to use, okay? Now, the chord definition is most likely used from a, a rail design standpoint. We're going to use DA, which is from a highway design standpoint, okay? So just so you're aware, whenever I use the term D in here, I'm referring to DA, okay? I'm referring to the arc definition, the angle subtended by a 100-foot arc, not by a 100-foot chord, okay? Does that make sense? Everybody okay with that? All right, uh, and keep in mind that as your R increases, the degree of the curve decreases, because as that radius dips and dips and dips and dips, the amount of angle that you subtend 100 feet, that gets smaller, okay? Does that make sense? All right, okay. Um, so let's talk about the individual components. Again, the first thing I want to talk about is the radius. The radius is probably the most important parameter that defines the characteristics of a curve. And for us, it's going to be a given parameter. But I think that you all can probably understand that if you had a curve that had a relatively high radius, the amount of that curvature, the sharpness of that curvature is going to be relatively low. So large radii curves are intended for high speeds, whereas uh, uh, curves with a very small radius are intended for low speeds, okay? I mean, if you had a curve with a 100-foot radius on Interstate 64, that'd be a problem, right? That'd be a big problem, right? But I just want you to make, make sure you understand just like the physics of, of what we're talking about here, okay? Sound good? All right. So now what I want to do is I want to get into the math. And everything I'm about to talk about here, from here until now is just basic geometry. This is stuff that you probably did in high school. It just wasn't formulated with these symbols and in this fashion. We're talking about, for example, uh, the length of an arc is S equals R theta. You probably did that in, ge in high school geometry or maybe like pre-calculus here or something. I know you've done this math. You just probably haven't seen it in these symbols before. So I want to show you how I formatted these slides. So for example, this slide, I'm talking about R and I. On the next slide, these squares will turn blue, and then you'll see the next symbols that, you're that I'll talk about. So I kind of made it a point to make this kind of navigable. OK, so computing curve components. So again, the, the, um, the bless, uh, bless you. So you're going to be given the radius of the curve. What about the intersection angle, the deflection angle? Most likely, the intersection angle will be given to you. However, this is something that you can probably reason your way through just based off of your inherent understanding of angles, azimuths, and bearings. For example, if I give you a bearing of this line and a bearing of this line, it shouldn't be rocket science to try and figure out what is the angle between those lines, and that's your intersection angle. Okay? So I'm going to probably give that to you. But again, I just want to mention that you could easily compute the intersection angle between the forward and back azimuths with just some simple angle calculations. Sound good? Okay. Now, so watch this, watch this. So on this slide, these squares are red because I was talking about these. Now on the next slide, I've already talked about these, so now we're going to talk about T, okay? So T is the tangent distance. And so the tangent distance is from the PC to the PI or the PI to the uh, PT. Now, the way that I'm coming up with that, that formula, um, let me grab this eraser over here. So the way that I'm coming up with that formula is, let me, let me see if I can highlight this. And I'm probably not going to do this for all of these, but I just want you to see that these expressions are not just coming out of the ether. So here's a curve, right? So let's look at this, okay? So 
What is this angle? That angle is I, right? So if that angle is I, if I were to split that right down the middle, that angle is I over 2. Make sense? Now, if I have that going on, this, because it's tangent, is a right angle, right? So if I know that this is R, and I know this angle, and I want to find this distance right here, I got myself a right triangle. And that right triangle looks like this. I know R, this is I over 2, that's a right angle, and I'm trying to find this. How do I find that? Well, the tangent of that is that over that. Multiply both sides by R. So where did I come up with this T equals R tangent of I over 2? It's just geometry. Okay, so there's nothing here. What I, the point I'm trying to make is there's nothing here that's really all that, you know, uh, off the wall. This is basic geometry, basic trick. Sound good? Do you all remember from geometry that if I have a circular arc that subtends an angle theta with a radius, that the arc length is R times theta? Do y'all remember that? Well, how do I get the length of the curve? I take R times the angle. And the only other thing I'm doing is pi over 180. Why am I doing pi over 180? To get degrees into radians. That's it. Okay? That's, that's all there is. Right? Does that make sense? All right. So, again, shouldn't be anything here that's all that, all that uh, bizarre. Okay. Now, long chord. Okay? Long chord. Again, similar trig. I'm trying to determine this distance right here. Okay? Note that L and LC are different. They're not the same thing. L is the arc length along the curve. LC is if I were to strike a tape from PC to PT and mark the straight line distance. Okay, so they are different. The degree of the curve is how much of the curve uh, or, or how much angle is required to subtend a 100-foot arc. And so that's 100 I over L. Now this formula, or more specifically how this is related in your FE reference manual, is going to be a little different. If you look in your reference manual, it'll say R equals 5729.58 over D, and you're like, where did that number come from? It's just 180 over pi times 100. So if you take 180 over pi times 100, you get 5729.58. So. Sound good? Okay. Um, the last two uh, are the external distance and the middle ordinate. The external distance is from the PI to the, I guess, the apex of the curve or the middle of the curve. And then the middle ordinate is from M to the, uh, uh, the middle of the chord all the way to the long chord. Okay. So when we um, do our CAD lab, we're going to strike a tape on those to see if our as-built matches what we thought it should be. So we're going to compute it, then we're going to stake out the curve and see if that's what we actually got. Okay. Make sense? And again, a couple of things worth pointing out. I got all these slides on Blackboard, and these formulas are in here. So the first page covers vertical curves, and then the second page covers horizontal curves. So you can see the E formula right here, and you can see the M formula right here. I see a couple people writing it down, so I'll give it a sec. All right, do I have a question? Any questions? All right, this part I want you to like really pay attention to. This is important, okay? This is an easy thing to confuse, okay? So, your initial staking, okay? So, I'm going to erase these rather excellent exam statistics over here. So, I'm going to erase this right here. So, watch this. Okay. So, So your initial staking, so you're going to go like this, then like this, okay? So this might be the beginning of the project, and this might be your first PI, okay? So when you're staking out the curve, okay, the first thing that you're going to know as the surveyor is you're going to know the station of the PI. 
So let's say this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's just say this is station seven, just to keep things simple, right? Okay. So what you're going to do is that, so what I want to do is stake along the curve. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the PI, I'm going to back up some, maybe to like right here to find the PC. Now, how do I find the station for the PC? I take the station for the PI and I subtract what? I subtract the tangent, right? Okay. But some of you might think, oh, well, that means the PT equals the PI plus the tangent, right? Absolutely wrong. Okay. The reason why is because this is station one, two, three, four. None of these other stations really matter at the very end. Really what matters is now this is station five. This is station six. This is station seven. This is station eight. This is station nine. That's a horrible artistic skill. But the idea is that the, the final stations go along the curve. So the station for the PC is PI minus T, but the station at the end is this plus what? Anybody know what I'm adding here? I'm adding the length of the curve, not the tangent. I'm adding along the curve. Okay. Does that make sense? So I go, so I start at the PI, I back up to the PC, and then I continue my stationing along the curve. So the PT station is PC plus L. Does that make sense? Everybody okay with that? That's an easy thing to go, oh, it's just PI plus T. Or, that's wrong, okay? Because the point is, the curve length is not going to equal 2T, if you want just a pure math answer. L is not going to equal 2 times the tangent. Okay, And you'll see that in the example we're about to do. It's going to be off. Any questions? Okay. Let's do an example. Okay. And we probably won't get to our second example, but it's okay because if you can do the first one, you can do the second one. It's really kind of repetitive. Honestly, I, um, I probably wouldn't have put both of them in here if I was redoing this presentation. Okay, so we have a horizontal curve with an intersection angle of eight degrees, 24 minutes, uh, zero seconds, a PI at station 64, 27, 46, uh, and a radius given here, compute the following. The degree of the curve, the PC and the PT station, the external distance and the middle ordinate. Now, I'll tell you that um, the, uh, um, the degree of the curve um, is gonna come out as a nice pretty number. Um, but usually they don't. Um, the rest of these are, will be uh, predictably a little messier. Okay, so let me there we go. So let's um, let's get into this, and I'll say. Starting parameters and so R will either be something that is given to you as a surveyor or if I want to make the exam more challenging I might say solve for R based on other given quantities but the point is you're not going to need to design R based on a given speed you're not going to need to do that okay the intersection angle And then the station of the PI sixty seven point forty six. And we're just going to handle these one at a time. Okay. So can anybody find a really easy formula in here 
that given the data I have, how would I compute D? D. And by the way, while it's not here in the reference manual, D is also DA. Anybody got one? It's the very first one, right? The, the, we are given that R We're given that, right? So all I got to do is swap them out and say, and these are all in feet, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. And again, this number comes out kind of pretty, but the next ones probably won't. What does this come out to be? Two. So it's it's two degrees or two degrees, zero minutes, zero seconds. So that's pretty easy. Let's do something that's a little more challenging. Let's do the PC and the PT stations. Now, I propose that in order to compute that, what we're going to need to do is we've got the station of the PI, right? We're going to need the station of the PI minus T and the station of the PC plus L. So we're going to need T and L, okay? How do we compute T? Radius times tangent, one half. And then this is, uh, what do we get for T? Two ten point three eight. Do I have a second on that? Has everybody brought the Casio FX one fifteen ES plus or similar scientific calculator to class? Right. I'm sitting here looking at people who don't have their Casio FX one fifteen ES plus or similar scientific calculator on their desk, including people in the front row. Like you sit in the front row, and you know I'm going to do this. All right. Do I have a second? Yes. All right, there we go. Everybody's like, class is in. I was like, I'll keep asking for a second. So now we're going to ask for the length of the curve. What is the length of the curve? What's an easy way of computing that? Maybe we can do that. We can do that one or this one. It doesn't matter. I might use this one simply because it only relies on information I was previously given. Like if I had a calculator error on this one, then this one will be wrong too. So, um, so the R was So, okay. anybody got an answer on this one? So, 420.00, do I have a second? So, note that the length of the curve does not equal two tangent. They're not the same thing. Okay. So therefore, it's 
So we'll do it this way. We'll do the PC station is the PI station minus the tangent. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. This is 64, 27.46 minus that. And remember, when you're putting that into your calculator, just like don't put the plus. But when you report your answer, do include the plus. Anybody got an answer? All right, and then for station PT, it's going to be station PC plus L. So take that value plus 420. There we go. All right. I'm going to go through these really quick because I know we're getting short on time. So, so these are very plug and chug. So E, E what we can do is just R times one over the cosine of i over two minus one. And I'm just gonna give you that answer because we're running short on time. This one ends up being 7.71. And then for the m, m is gonna be r times one minus the cosine of i over two. And that one ends up being 7.69. So just they're really close to one another, but slightly off, just a little bit off. Okay. Boop. All right. Does anybody have any questions? So what we're going to handle next time is how to stake these out. All right. I am going to bring up the QR code in case anybody missed it. Otherwise, I will see you on Wednesday.